In the last five years, I've posted more than 300 videos on this YouTube channel that are probably in totality comprised more than 100 hours of, of, of footage. I've uh, written two books that are full-length books, one of which is a memoir that's very personal, that goes into tons of you know, my thoughts and experiences over the years. And I've also written an advice book about different conversations I had with people when I was giving advice to others. And I've also made probably a couple hundred posts on my social media pages in the last few years, uh, mostly my Facebook page, which there's a link in the description in case you want to follow me on Facebook. The thing is, despite all these things that I have online, despite all the work I've done that's readily available to everybody, that I want everybody to see, I've never been worried for one second that I might have offended somebody or that what I'm about to do will offend somebody. And I want to talk about some of the things, some of the tips that I follow to prevent myself from ever being worried about offending somebody. So first of all, the first tip that a lot of people would think for this situation is, well, if you don't want to be afraid of offending anybody, then don't do anything or say anything that's offensive. And I'm here to tell you that that tip is not feasible, completely irrelevant. First of all, disregard the fear that you will ever offend somebody and accept the fact that you will offend somebody. And here's why I say this. We live in a world that is full of 7.5 billion people across over 200 countries, multiple ethnic, racial, background, religious backgrounds, all sorts of different backgrounds and cultural identities that make up all these 7.5 billion people. Because of the diverse because of the diverse species that we are on this planet, everything that happens will offend at least one person, will make at least one person unhappy, agitated, upset, sad, irritated, whatever it is. Every single thing that is said or done on this earth will offend somebody else due to the sheer number of humans that exist. If this world consisted of 50 people, then I could tell you right now that there are lots of things you could say or do that wouldn't offend those 50 people. You'd be good. You'd be completely clear. You, there are things you could do that other people would never consider offensive. But we live in an earth of 7.5 billion people, so statistical certainty is that everything that is said or done will offend somebody. And here's a perfect example. If you go on social media and say, I think murder is bad, and I think that no one should kill anybody else, you will offend murderers. Murderers will not like you. Murderers will become unhappy with you. Murderers, murderers will leave your social media page, you know, in, in disgust. So everything we say or do is going to offend somebody, at least one person, at least if, this, if the thing is read or seen by enough people. So the first thing to do is to let go of the fear that you will offend somebody and accept the fact that you will offend somebody. Okay, the next tip that I have is never post something that does not have evidence or rational basis behind it. And here's what I mean by that. Most of the people who put things on social media that are offensive to lots of people and result in that person facing a lot of backlash or being canceled as the, as the saying goes, most of those examples are times when they said something or did something completely off the cuff based 100% on their emotions and based 0% on logic, facts, or reason. Perfect example, Deshaun Jackson yesterday. He said something on, on, about Hitler, which there is no evidence to support that what, what Hitler said or did was good. There's just no evidence. Like, of all the people to quote, he's the worst person to quote because there is nothing redeeming about him, about his existence. There's nothing positive to be gained from his existence. It's only negative. So when, when Deshaun Jackson posted that on, on social media yesterday, if you talked to him and said, hey, like, explain this, and you'd be like, well, I think this or that, and you'd be like, based on what? There's no logic or uh, facts behind what you're saying. Like, what you're saying cannot be defended by ev any evidence whatsoever. And if you look back, most of the examples of people facing backlash on social media were people who did things that were not based in fact or logic. There were things that... They did things that were indefensible in terms of logic and reason. Like you could do any Google search and find all this evidence that completely, you know, goes against what they said. My third tip is make sure with everything that you say and do online, you have good intentions behind them. So let's look at a scenario. Let's say I'm walking down the street 
And in scenario one, I'm walking on the street and I accidentally step on a bug and kill it. In scenario two, I'm walking on the street and I see a bug and I go out of my way to step on it and kill it. In those two situations, which one of those two do you find to be more egregious, more unfortunate, more depressing? The situation where I accidentally killed the bug or the situation where I purposefully killed the bug? Of course, almost all of you are going to say that the situation that's worse, the situation that makes me look like a bad person, is where I went out of my way to step in that bug for no reason whatsoever. And the reason is, intention matters. The, in the one situation, I accidentally stepped in the bug. That wasn't what I wanted to do. I didn't have an intention of hurting something else. The other situation, I intended to hurt the bug. So in both those situations, the end result is the dead bug. But the difference is the intention, the reason why the bug is dead. And the dead bug says nothing about the bug, but the intention says everything about me. So here's why I say this. When you go to post something on social media, if your intention 100% is altruistic, you want to spread a message that you think will help other people, you want to provide something that will be of value to others, that will not bring them down, that will not be detrimental. If your intentions are pure, do not have fear of offending other people. Again, you are going to still offend other people, and we can talk about what we can do when that happens. But my point is, if your intentions are pure, you should not be afraid of offending other people. It should not be a fear that you have. You've done everything that you could to not offend other people, and you don't want to offend other people. My last tip for how you can avoid ever being worried about offending other people is this. Never care about something so much that your happiness is contingent upon the opinions that other people have of you. So one of the common themes about when people get buried online for something they said that was offensive on social media is that those people immediately go into apology mode. They make a big long post about how, you know, they didn't mean to offend anybody, they're so sorry, uh, they're going to do a lot of introspection, they're going to become a better person, they're going to get more educated on this, and they're going to make sure to be, you know, like a supporter of the cause that, you know, for which they offended others. Most people, I would say about 90% of people who get called out on social media immediately go into full-on apology mode. The question is, why do some of those people do that? Of course, I think most of people do that out of a general desire to not want to hurt other people. But some people go into apology mode not because of their concern about offending other people, but more so because of their concern about losing things such as their job or their career or sponsors that support their show or their whatever their product is. A lot of people just fear the loss. They fear the loss of social media followers. They fear the loss of their sponsors. They fear the loss of their job. They fear the loss of their hobby. The thing is, none of us should care about something so much that our happiness is contingent upon the opinions of other people. And I'm going to talk about myself for a perfect example. I've been doing this for a few years. I have like 6,500 social media uh, YouTube followers as of this moment. But let's say hypothetically that I, in the next, let's say five years from now, that I had 500,000 social media followers. I can say completely honestly that I wouldn't be worried if I said something online that made 90% of them walk away you know, and leave me with only, you know, 50,000 followers as opposed to 500,000 followers. I've never once in the last five years, and I never will, worry about people unsubscribing from my work or not buying my books or uh, not thinking that I'm, uh, I'm wise or that I'm smart. I've never once worried about that. And the reason is because I don't care about this endeavor so much that my happiness is based on what other people think about it. Go ahead and take it from me. You take it from me, I'm still going to move on with my life just fine. And I think this is really important because when we hold on to things so tightly, we end up becoming irrational and we lose our semblance of objectivity and our semblance, semblance of what matters most. And we oftentimes 
ruin our very projects and we ruin our very reputations simply by trying everything we can to hold on to it. And in my last video, I, I, I quoted a Taylor Swift song and I talked about how I, I'm a fan of Taylor Swift's music, but um, this past weekend, I watched a documentary about Taylor Swift and it followed her through uh, as she was writing one of her albums. And one of the things that struck me about the video was how much Taylor Swift cares about what other people think about her music. Like when she was writing a song, she was like, oh, I want to change that. Like, I, want, I want it to go like this because like, that, people are going to like that. People are going to like that. That's, that's what they want to hear. Like, it almost seems like she feels like she exists to make everybody else happy, which I don't think is an uncommon thing among you know, celebrities or athletes or musicians or whatever it is. But at the same time, it's just the, the extent to which Taylor Swift was concerned about making people like her music was, I think, like almost unparalleled um, you know, in, in of people that I've seen musicians in, in that same sort of area. And the thing is, when we care so much about what other people think, we immediately set ourselves up for failure. Because in this world of 7.5 billion people, there are always going to be people who don't like our music. And I know that Taylor Swift plays to like huge crowds of like adoring fans, but I can be pretty, I'm pretty confident that if she looks out into the crowd and sees one person not really vibing her music when she's playing live, I bet that that registers with her more than the 49,999 people who are vibing with her music, who are really excited to be there, who are really happy. A lot of us fear rejection to the extent that we either never start things or we start things but become so afraid of losing them that we water down our beliefs, we water down our products to simply please everybody else. So Taylor Swift is watching this video. I want to, I want to listen to the album that you want to make, not the album that you think I want to hear. So that's just my side note. Um, but getting back, to this, getting back to my point here, um, we hold on to our reputations, we hold on to our jobs, we hold on to our, our, you know, our sponsors or our, our, our pet projects so tightly that the moment anyone says something that, we, that disagrees with us or that goes against our viewpoint, we immediately just want to apologize and just, just sort of like just go towards their view just to sort of make them happy, make them shut up almost. And that's unfortunate because again, it waters down our abilities, it waters down our work, it waters down our talent. You should never care about your job or your, your hobby or your reputation so much that you're willing to water down who you are as a person, that you're willing to change who you are as a person that you're willing to do anything to prevent yourself from offending somebody else or making someone else unhappy. So one of the reasons that I don't fear offending other people is because if one of my videos goes viral and everyone says, oh, this guy's so stupid, you know, I'm so much smarter than him and how could anyone be as dumb as him? And oh my gosh, what a loser. Everyone, no one should listen to him. Let's, let's start a, a, a campaign to bring him down and let's cancel Zach Good and all that kind of stuff. If that ever happens, I'm not going to care. <laughs> I'm just not going to care. I don't care if I'm making millions off of my work or making nothing off of my work. I don't care. And the reason is because I will be happy with or without this work. I love doing this work and I want to do it even more than I am now. I want to make this my whole job, my whole career. My, I want to make this my legacy. But I don't care about it being my legacy so much that I'm going to change the way I deliver my work or change the way I think to just to please other people. So if you don't want to have a fear of offending other people, then simply don't care about what you're doing so much that you'll water it down or not do it simply to make other people happy or to prevent other people from becoming unhappy. Now I want to put a big caveat at the end of this because I'm sure that there are some people who love Ben Shapiro and Mike Cernovich and, um, and Candace Owens who are watching this video right now and up to this point they're like, this guy's a Republican. He's got to be, he's got to be like, he's, you know, he's all about free speech. He doesn't like the cancel culture. Like he speaks out about the, about the cancel culture. Like he's on our side. Like he's like a Dave Rubin, you know, this guy, he's like, he's like a genius. Um, I'm here to tell you that no, I don't, I'm not, <laughs> I don't think like them at all. I do not like them at all. I do not listen to them at all other, other than to get entertainment value and to recognize what viewpoint I shouldn't have on a situation. Um, but at the same time, 
If you're watching this video and you're someone who's very far left on the political spectrum, up to this point, you may be watching this video and saying, that guy's gotta be conservative, like he's, he's like one of those like radical, like, you know, Charlie Kirks out there. Again, no, you're wrong. I'm, I'm, not, I'm very much in the middle. And the reason I say is because I believe in free speech. I believe that we all should be furthering what we think is intellectual conversation in the public sphere. But at the same time, I also recognize that there are some things that you can do or say that are reasonably offensive, that would offend a well-meaning person. And I believe that a lot of people on the right who tout free speech, like, like Milo Yiannopoulos, like the Ben Shapiro's, they tout free speech as like a, an invincibility cloak against being a jackass. It's almost like, well, I can say what I want, so F you, and like you don't like it, you know, F your feelings, I don't care about you. And I think that that's really wrong because, yeah, like we need to have free speech and it's important that we all are honest with how we think and, and who we are. But at the same time, free speech, it, insulting people to celebrate free speech is a waste of free speech. <laughs> it's like, if you have a limited amount of time to say a certain number of things over the course of your life, everything in your life is finite. There's only a certain number of words you can say for the rest of your life, and every second that goes by, you can say less and do less with your life. If you want to waste your time just being rude to other people, you, there's something wrong with that. Like you should, you should really seriously cons reconsider that your your views. But at the same time, we all can't be so ex expectant of being comfortable that we become completely unsettled and unhappy. And, and angry whenever we come across something that offends us or makes us unhappy. Life itself is offensive in a lot of ways. Life itself is suffering. Like we're all going to suffer. We all go through pain. There are tons of people around us that are suffering and in pain. Life itself is suffering. We cannot have an expectation that I'm going to go through life and only be surrounded by things that are comfortable to me, that make me feel good, that don't challenge me. That's not an expectation that we should have. So on the one hand, while people shouldn't be a jackass, people shouldn't just say whatever they want and not worry about it, not worry about offending other people. At the same time, we should not expect to never be offended. We're going to be offended. I'm sure I've offended you by this point, if not because I'm sort of rambling because it's like a Wednesday and I'm sort of tired from work this week. Whatever it is, we should not be afraid that we're going to become offended. We should not, we should not have an expectation that we will never be offended.